Thanks for downloading this episode of Grilled, which is sponsored by Westlands. I'm Cara, the editor of The Staff Canteen, and in this episode, Tani, our deputy editor, talks to chefs and owners of Caracatea, Emily and Diego Ferrari. The couple opened their first solo venture a year ago, and they share their experience of running their own place and how their careers have shaped them as chefs and business owners with us in this episode. Hi, everyone. We are here today at Character with Emily Rue and Diego Ferrari. Um, we're here to talk about how they got to this point today, how they built their successes and to pick their brains for a little bit of advice for you guys. Hi, Emily. Hi, Diego. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Very good, thanks. It's lovely to be here. So you uh, opened Character pretty much a year ago. How are things? Um, yeah, so we'll be, the restaurant will be one on Friday. Brilliant. Um, definitely an achievement and that we're really proud of and the year's literally flown by. Very quick. Yeah, it's come very, very quick. Um, you know, we're really proud of the whole team, of, you know, all the dishes that have gone out and, yeah, really happy of all our all our wonderful customers. Brilliant. And you were named um, top newcomer at the A London Hardens. Um Restaurant Awards a couple of weeks ago, so congratulations for that. You must Thank be. You. Thank you. Um, so the the whole feature is uh, basically to to give people a little bit of inspiration and and tell them how you know you got from where you started off to where you are today. So my first question for you guys would be: Do you remember your first food related memory? So a moment where you thought, "Wow, this is you know this is outstanding." And you could have been you know two or three. Diego, where did you start? But for sure, it's a, it's a pasta for me. Uh, <laughs> it's a, my my mom cook a, cook a lot of pasta every every lunch. is a pasta at home, so it's something I, uh, I really have in my head, and uh, yeah, really important for me. And and we work a, a character uh, pasta, and and we try to 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 use uh, other ingredient and doing the same results of uh, yeah. of a plate of pasta. But it's tracing back to that that memory of the pasta that your yeah, yeah, mama yeah, made. Yeah. Lovely. How about you, Emily? Um, I don't think there's a specific dish either, but I've always loved food, <laughs> all food. <laughs> I mean, there's pictures of me eating snails at like the age of three, <laughs> oysters. Like, I, I used to eat everything. So, um... Yeah, food in general, just a passion for food. Yeah. And did you always know that you wanted to become a chef? Yes, I think from very early on, that was my dream. Yeah. How about you, Diego? Yes, me too. I start to look my mother and my grandmother cook really young. And uh, I always play with the pan when my mother cook. And yeah, I start uh, really young in a in a kitchen You're about and, 14. Uh, yeah 13 14 yeah, yeah. going just to check the service and Do take out peeling. the plate and chop the parsley or something like that yeah really. yeah what was the restaurant scene like at the time it was in milan wasn't it, it was near milan yeah it was a little little trattoria we call and uh, very simple food uh, another time pasta and uh, Made fish, really, really simple, and mm-hmm. uh, but it yeah. taught you the basics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what was your first experience of working in a kitchen, Emily? Um, so I was a lot older. Um, Were you doing well, unpa- actually, unpaid say, work at the Gavroche? Well, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> saying that I used to spend sort of Saturday nights um, <laughs> at Gavroche. Um, I was about yeah twelve, thirteen actually, but I mean it was sort of they put me in a corner and I peeled for. Four hours I think straight. your dad told me stories yeah. about you peeling potatoes in the kitchen. Tomatoes <laughs> and potatoes, yeah. I, I just, I just loved sort of the the camaraderie and the team and yeah, yeah family. Yeah. Um, and so ha- what was your first uh, professional experience outside of family? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was well, first catering college. Um, so Institut Paul Bocuse, mm-hmm. and then. 
So my first internship was at uh, Le Tron, no, La Table du Lancaster in Paris, mm -hmm. um, which was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. I yeah. really, really loved it. And because it was such a small team, so we were about six in the kitchen, um, I got a station straight away. So it was, wow. you know, amazing for any for any intern. Um, so you sort of got to learn things really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah completely. At the deep end. Absolutely. And it, I, I loved it. Yeah. Really loved it and got on really well with the team. And then it just, you know, progressed and progressed to where we are today. Brilliant. And you, Diego, you, so after Milan, you ended up going to Paris as well? Yeah, I started uh, in Paris, and uh, Paris and Monaco. Mm -hmm. And uh, I passed almost 10 years yeah. in France. Yeah. And then... Uh, you worked for... Um, Alain Ducasse. Uh, Alain Ducasse, yeah. yeah. And, uh, what was he like uh, to work for? It was a really, really nice experience. It was uh, really hard, especially in the beginning. But uh, I learned uh, a lot, a lot, mm -hmm. really a lot. Uh, if you had to sum up like the main takeaway that you got from your time working for Monsieur Ducasse, what I learned the most is the the rigor, 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 mm -hmm. the rigor and the and the organization yeah. of you can have in the kitchen, and uh, and obviously the. the, the the, the food. The, mm -hmm. the, the was he so? Was he working in the kitchen with you? Uh, it's not really work in the kitchen. It's a, a lot of restaurant. Yeah, yeah. But uh, okay. was uh, yeah, yeah was uh, at the restaurant almost every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, for every tasting and uh, even if there are no tasting, it was 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 present. Always yeah, checking, yeah, yeah, always, always check or taste uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. And would you say that in your career so far he was your biggest mentor or could you name someone else that was very influential for you? For sure, I was, he's, 10 years for him, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a really mentor. And uh, I passed another, another time, four years in Italy with David Oldani, it was uh, mm -hmm. really important for me as well. Yeah. And, uh, what did he teach you? But the same was uh, he, he worked in uh, in France and uh, in England as well for uh, a big name uh, even for Ducasse and uh, the same was uh, was really passionate about the food and the organization in the kitchen was uh, really different because it was a really small kitchen it was four when I started with him and uh, with Ducasse it was, 25. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not the same. But it was a really a different organization and I think uh, it was really important to see because look, today we are seven in the kitchen and the same is really small and you have to be really organized. Yeah. For, for do a good service. Yeah. How about you, Emily? Who could, would you say has been the most influential or shaping? I your... mean, I think each kitchen you, you you work in, you you pick up things. And yeah, you, you know, there's so much to learn in every single kitchen and different techniques. And so, from you know, from each internship, each work, this taught me so much. Um, I mean, for sure, working at Monaco for Fernando Ducasse in the pastry section was just, you know, another world. It's it's precision beyond belief um you know it's the best quality products that you could ever find price is not an issue um so that's you know in itself amazing and probably something that you know you see very rarely in other restaurants yeah um and then i worked for akram in paris who's such a character um in in the in the best way possible he's extremely creative he's extremely um fun he he's very spur of the moment so he would sort of come in one morning and say okay what do we have in the fridge mm -hmm. and we're like are we are we changing menu today like are we wasn't quite aware of this and um he was like yeah we're changing menu <laughs> and it was literally 10 30 so um you yeah. know he we'd bring out what was in the fridge and he'd just create something new um so that's that's amazing Ta to tell you to because, think on your feet exactly and um and that's great to have that creativity. 
and he's he's pretty unique in that. Um, so yeah, I think every every everywhere I've worked has taught me something. Yeah, and looking at um, like practical things in the kitchen, Diego, can you remember the first dish of your own that you ever had on a menu? Or at least, can you remember how it felt to have your first dish on a menu? I, I remember sort of like my first service, so it was promoted to sous chef at Akram. Yeah. Um, and sort of being on the pass for the first time and like, you think it's easy. <laughs> like you think it just sort of flows. People bring you, make you it stuff look very and, easy. and you plate and, and that's it, just rolls. And I just thought, oh my God. Like it's a whole different dynamic because effectively you're not cooking in it anything you're you're dressing and but you're the one setting the tempo for everybody else in the kitchen and also for the room yeah so it's everything rests on you yeah it was so daunting those that first week at the pass it was incredibly difficult but um great challenge loved it yeah and how about um do you remember the moment where you nailed a particular technique that maybe you it took you a while to wrap your head around like I don't know like a knife skill or something that maybe took you six months to get perfect but do you remember that process and that that technique and could you talk me through it with well, the celeriac that we have on the dish uh, that we have on the menu at the moment um it took a long time to sort of yeah make it perfect we tried yeah, Tom. many times at home <laughs> um and it was always the cooking was either not enough or too much and the sauce was either too liquid or too heavy and there was quite a bit of back and forth thing for about what a month mm. yeah yeah one or two months um when it comes to things like that is there any better advice than trial and error trial and error is I think, <laughs> the best the best advice yeah just do it again and again and again and again to this day, is there a tool or a piece of equipment that you use in the kitchen that you could not live without? Maybe that electric pasta machine. Yeah, that's yeah, pasta machine, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, we do a lot of, uh, of pasta, so he's, uh, he makes the, the, the easy the way. And, uh, yeah, mm. and uh, it's for the timing as well. And, uh, it's, it's really important. And... Uh, we use today all the kitchen is induction, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's, it's really different. But uh, after a couple of years, use the induction. It's really practical. And yeah, you can you know, go back afterwards. Uh, and you start to understand how how it properly works. Yeah, properly yeah. works. Is, uh, and in terms of yeah, energy it's saving and cost saving, it's yeah. something else I imagine as well. Heat. Mm. No, it's, it's very practical. Yeah. Absolutely. So would you agree? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> All induction. So you guys, um, did you meet at Monaco? Yes. At the Louis Yes. Yeah. And have you, so you've, you've always worked together. So we didn't, we've never really worked together before mm. being at the restaurant because, so I was in pastry in Monaco and Diego was in the kitchen. So already it, it's separate from one another. It's not one central kitchen. Mm -hmm. So although they're beside each other and very close, we're not in the same mm. kitchen. And you've got enough going on to, <laughs> exactly. to worry um, and then um, in Paris we never worked together mm. nor in London when um, you were working at Gavroche so this is the first time that we properly worked together yeah so how do you navigate that um, in terms of keeping your professional life and your personal life separate or is that not something you really have a, an issue with no we have we have to separate the two the two things I I think so. When we when we close the door in the night of the restaurant, we try to speak with something else. We try else to switch off. We try. Yeah. It's, it's not, not always it's easy. It's not always <laughs> easy, of course, but uh, we have we have to. I think. Uh, yeah. For, for focus mm -hmm. a bit on our own and not the restaurant twenty four hour. Yeah, and of course. I think. But because it's such you know a, a dream and a project that we've been working on for so long, it's difficult sometimes to sort of turn Switch that page off. and yeah. say, yeah. let's not talk about it anymore. Because yeah. it is such an important part of our life. And even if it was just one of you switching off from that at the end of the day would be difficult. Mm. So. Yeah. 
both of you is probably very yes. tough. And how do you yeah. allocate uh, tasks in the kitchen? Who does what? And how do you decide on that? So essentially, so we, we try, test or think of the dishes together. Um, it's normally a spur of the moment idea that's then transformed into, oh, actually, we could do this, this and this. And, oh, I think we should do this. And um, we bounce off each other really well in that sense. Um, but the day to day running of the kitchen is, is all Diego. OK. And do you, do you miss that? Would you like to to slip into that role a little bit more eventually? Um, or? I suppose some days I miss it, but if, if there's peas to peel or mm-hmm. if there's lots of mushrooms to wash, don't call me. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> the next pair of hands. So, um, and so does that mean that you manage a lot of the sort of HR and admin and things as well? I manage all yeah. of that. A bundle of fun. bundle of fun. <laughs> bundle of fun. Good though. So, are you guys happy with everything and how your like the dynamic works? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really I think it works really well, um, and it you know it means that we both have a very clear image of where the business stands at every single point of the day yeah. throughout the week, the month, um, the year. Yeah. Emily, I have a question for you. Over time, have you found it difficult? to shake the being Michelle Rue Jr.'s daughter, being part of the Rue dynasty, sort of, have you found that customers expect something of you or have you found that, you know, you get a little bit of flack for being the daughter of a prominent chef because because people, you know, will will under underestimate how much of your own effort maybe yeah, went into I getting mean, to where you are? The, the, there is that... There has been, a, you know, a few customers that have come here and that have not enjoyed as much as I would have liked or who have been a little bit disappointed um, because they thought they were going to walk into a mini gavroche. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that that's sort of why we wanted to make it so different. The colours are extremely different. The menu is completely different. The, the the price point... I mean, we've tried to be different in every single way possible so that there was no possible confusion that you're nowhere near Gavroche and that this is not a rude restaurant. Um, that being said, it's very rare that people are really not happy. Yeah. Um, and the very few customers that we've had, I've, I've gone to talk to them and, you know, explained that, you know, that style of cooking is is not really us mm-hmm. and that this is very much our own thing and that, you know, essentially I'm married and my name isn't Rue anymore. <laughs> so, you know, at some point they have to detach from that. Yeah. Um, but on the, the flip side of that, you must get quite a lot of business from people that absolutely. just want to eat here because they... Absolutely. And um, and we're very, very thankful for that. And, you know, 90% of them absolutely love it and come back day in and day out. Mm-hmm. Um, but so far, no, it's been okay. Good. It's good to hear. Yeah. So we are um, approaching Mich- the Michelin Guide Week at a very fast pace. I can, I can tell you it's getting a little bit frantic TikTok, at the office TikTok. for us as well. <laughs> are you holding any hopes of getting in this year or is that something that you're not even thinking of at this stage I mean I think it would be you know it would be amazing it would be a dream for any chef to to, to have an accolade um, like a Michelin star if it's not for us this year then who knows maybe next year or the year after you know we won't we'll continue doing our job um, continue running the restaurant and making customers happy that's essentially why we open the restaurant yeah so um if if we if we get the call then that's absolutely amazing and we'll be thrilled and if we don't then we continue heads down and and keep keep what we're doing is anyone going a bit stir crazy in the kitchen sort of staring at the phone no no <laughs> no not yet no. we're you know we're we're trying to keep very calm about it and there's enough work to do anyway to keep yourself occupied so um yeah yeah and how about other restaurants is there any, any anywhere that you can see this year is lined up to get a star for sure, or two I mean, or three? I've 
well, I think a few of them are probably in en route for getting through, but mm -hmm. I mean, you just never know, do you? Well, I mean, regardless of whether or not you get a star this year or any time in the future, it's a it's a beautiful restaurant and you. wish you Thanks. all the best and the most success. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for taking the time, guys. We hope you enjoyed this interview and if you have any comments, feel free to tweet us or comment on the post. Uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download. And finally, if you like what we do, whether it's our podcast or our videos or even our features, please head over to our Patreon page and support us there.